how to validate the accuracy of a blood pressure monitor like this one, which is the common blood pressure monitor we have around here. And you see the universal standard for validation developed by AAMI, that means the Association for Advancements of Medical Instrument, Instrument, Instrument and the ESE, which means the European Society of Hypertension, and ISO, which means International Organization for Standardization. These three bodies came together to develop a, to develop a universal standard for validating a blood pressure monitor. It's a very simple procedure which we will be going through stage by stage. The first thing we want to consider is the fact that there are some basic requirements in order for us to be able to do this validation. Number one, we want to make sure we have this mercury sphygmomanometer, which is the traditional old type of mercury sphygmomanometer. You can see it. Now, apart from this very device, we also need to have a specific blood pressure monitor whose accuracy we want to confirm and validate. That is the second thing we need. Now, beyond this, in order for us to be able to measure the blood pressure accurately, we need two experienced individuals that can use this type of device to measure blood pressure accurately. So, two individuals that will be measuring the blood pressure using this and then compare the value they get when they use this together with the value when this is being used. Now, in, apart from that, we need an individual that we act as a volunteer whose blood pressure will be measured. How are we going to do this blood pressure measurement? And that takes us to the next step, the method. The method we are using is referred to a safe and sequential blood pressure measurement. There are different methods that can be used. However, the agreed method for blood pressure uh, equipment validation is to use same and sequential blood pressure measurement, meaning an individual that means we will be using one hand of the individual that will be using, and that very hand is the one we will continue to use for our blood pressure measurement. Now let's go to the next thing, which is the actual measurement of the reference blood pressure using the reference blood pressure equipment and our test device. The first thing we will do is that the two individuals that want to be measuring the blood pressure for us will come out. They will use this mercury sphygmomanometer, the traditional mercury one, to measure the blood pressure. That first measurement that they will be doing will not be used. We will discard that reading. And there, after their own first measurement too, they will also use this test device the first time on the same individual to take measurement. Those measurements will not be used in our calculation. After that, we now go to the main ones that will be used for our calculation. We go to this first device, our traditional mechanism sweeping manometer. Two individuals that are trained in blood pressure measurement, we use this device to measure blood pressure. The two individuals, they are reading, the individuals will be blinded against each other, meaning the value that A gets, B must not know. Or whatever B got while measuring the blood pressure, A must not know. So the two individuals will come out, we use the same hand sequentially. A will measure, after 30 seconds, B will measure. The value they get, we find the average, and then record that average value as our R1, that means the first reference value. Then we will drop this device and pick our test device. Use the test device to take the blood pressure of that individual using the same arm and record that value as our T1. Thereafter, we drop this device, take this again, invite the same individual that did the first measurements, the two of them. Each one of them takes the blood pressure reading using the same arm with the same device. The value they get will be blinded against each other, but we find the average at the end of the day. So the average of their second reading will be recorded as our second reference reading R2. Then we drop this device and pick our test device again. Use the same arm 
Use the same hand and measure the blood pressure of the individual using this our test device again and we record that as our T2. So we continue the procedure like that until we have four readings taken with this and three readings taken with this. So that is what we are going to use. By the end of our reading, we will have R1, which is the average of the first test reading, of the first reference value, R2, R3, and R4. And we will also have T1, T2, T3. Once we have this reading, our work is halfway done. So all we need to do is now to find the, average, the difference between the value we get while using this reference device and the value we get while using this. Note this, is the difference that we are looking for at this stage. So we find the difference between the values we get while using the traditional one and value we get while using our test device. Now the bottom line of this procedure is this. What we want to look for is the fact that at the end of the day, we want to find the mean of the blood pressure differences between our reference device and our test device. The difference in the mean, that is the average of the difference since we are taking many readings. Let's go to the next stage where we actually do the verification or the, the validation of the accuracy of our device. Now to the validation criteria. The criteria for validating this kind of procedure or step is just two things. One is referred to criteria one and two. And in order for us to judge criteria one, we must have find the mean, that means the average of the blood pressure differences we got using our reference device and our test device. The first criteria is the fact that the mean of the blood pressure differences must be less than or equals to 10 millimeter of mercury. So if the difference we get in the blood pressure we have we, we, we found, we, we calculated, that means after using this and this, if the difference is not more than, is less than or equals to 10 millimeter of mercury, that, that device is valid, is accurate enough for us to continue to use. And the second criteria is the fact that the probability that this device will continue to give us that range of, uh, of, of, of readings, that means to continue to give us a difference of less than or equals to 10 millimeter of mercury must be at least 85%. So the probability of this device Giving us a reading that we have this kind of difference must be at least 85%. However, the second aspect might not be an easy thing for an individual to, divide, to, to, to determine the probability because in that condition, you need a higher number of people in order for you to be able to calculate that kind of probability. But if this validation procedure might not be an easy thing for an individual to go through, and that is why down below this video, I will add a link to resources, to places where you'll be able to get a blood pressure monitor that has been validated. However, if you already have one and you want to get it validated, you can also contact us. You'll see a link below that will lead you to our website so that you can contact us to get your blood pressure monitor validated for accuracy. Thanks for watching the video to the end. Please click the red subscribe button below so that you can get notified each time we release a new video. And please do share this American education video with your loved ones. Thank you.